We know that forests are one of the best tools in the fight against climate change. Carbon integrated into vegetation and food chains contributes towards the mitigation of global warming. However, few people know that more than half the fixed carbon on Earth is not in the woods, but rather in certain wetlands which cover only 3% of the planet. This valley in the province of Tierra del Fuego contains more carbon than its surrounding forests, because inside it has an enormous peat bog. Although peatlands represent around half of the world's wetlands, they are barely known in Latin America. In general, in the hemisphere north, the turberas form part of the culture of the population, especially because people have developed in that environment. In cambio, in Latin America, it's not the same. The turberas are only in places apart. Eh, salvo en el caso acá de Tierra del Fuego, donde las tenemos muy, muy próximas a las ciudades y dentro de la misma ciudad tenemos eh, el, el ambiente de las turberas. Located in the southern extreme of South America, Tierra del Fuego contains 95% of Argentina's peatlands, many of them forming a complex mosaic with the surrounding forests. There's a wide variety of peatlands in Tierra del Fuego, However, the most notable are dominated by sphagnum moss, whose fibers may be tens of centimeters long. These peatlands can be up to 10 meters thick and 10,000 years old. We can find many plants coexisting in them, including bushes and dwarf trees. Because of their characteristics, diversity and composition, Tierra del Fuego's peatlands are of international importance, and some are among the most beautiful on Earth. This was demonstrated during the International Symposium on Peatlands, held in Ushuaia in 2005, where 55 experts from 17 countries on five continents stated that Tierra del Fuego's peatlands have an unparalleled diversity, many of them being unique. They also stated that they constitute the most southern concentration of miles on the planet and that they are an irreplaceable part of the world's natural heritage. These ecosystems, thousands of years old, are highly sensitive to human activity and they may disappear unless adequate steps are taken to protect them. Many peatlands in Tierra del Fuego are in danger. The main impact comes from extractive industries. La explotación de las turberas para la elaboración de sustratos para horticultura, eh, para almacigos, es el, actualmente la principal amenaza sobre las turberas locales. There are no social benefits to be had from peatland exploitation because it generates such low employment. The extraction of peat also produces great ecological and visual damage, making it an unsustainable activity. Before extraction, peat is drained. Thus, it dries quickly and degrades through biological processes. This activity has a direct bearing on climate change. Peatlands are vast carbon reservoirs. It's been estimated they store a carbon stock equal to all terrestrial biomass and twice the amount in the world's forests. As they develop, forests accumulate carbon progressively until, on reaching maturity, that stock peaks. Active peat bogs go on fixing carbon throughout their slow but ongoing photosynthetic activity. Las turberas siempre tienen la capacidad de almacenar carbono a lo largo de toda su existencia. 
Y, y esa entonces es la gran importancia, no solo la, la capacidad actual de almacenar carbono, sino su potencial hacia el futuro. In this way, they provide a vital service for climate regulation by mitigating global warming. On the other hand, the destruction of peatlands by drainage and the conversion of land for agriculture, fires and peat extraction, is today causing 10% of all global carbon dioxide emissions. Destroyed peatlands not only cease to fix carbon, but also release carbon that had been retained for centuries. Besides fixing carbon and storing it, peatlands provide priceless services to the environment. The spongy mass of peat can absorb huge quantities of water, which mitigates rising water levels in mountainous areas. This regulates the subsequent flow by releasing accumulated water gradually, even in times of drought. Therefore, peatlands are important regulators of water cycles, which are vital for the southernmost city in the world, Ushuaia. This city of nearly 100,000 inhabitants is supplied with water from the Arroyo Grande stream. The Vinciguerra Glacier and Andorra Valley peatlands form part of its regulatory system. Without the mitigating effect of these peatlands, rising water levels and droughts would be of a greater intensity and frequency, which would affect the city's water supply. These functions are more significant in a climate change scenario, with harsher droughts and rising water levels. This process is starting to be observed in Tierra del Fuego. Some glaciers have been retreating for the past four decades, losing their capacity to regulate water resources. In this context, protecting peatlands may be one of the best methods to regulate activity in the water basin. Because of these threats, the Vinciguerra Glacier and associated peatlands were declared a Ramsar site in 2009. This now means that along with Tierra del Fuego National Park, 74% of Arroyo Grande's basin is protected in a major step towards preserving Ushuaia's future water supply. The Ramsar site declaration promotes scientific, educational and recreational activities on peatlands and means that an ecological World Heritage Site and a major carbon reservoir are being preserved. But the future of many peatlands in Tierra del Fuego is uncertain. Although at present the exploitation rate is 0.1%, in recent years license requests to exploit them have risen 100-fold, a clear sign of the pressure to exploit them. This, without doubt, puts at risk the environmental services provided by Tierra del Fuego's peatlands. Speeding up financing mechanisms for their study and preservation would allow a re-evaluation of a unique and irreplaceable natural heritage site, vital for providing ecological services and for mitigating climate change. <laughs>